Hey guys, got a minute? I want to show you a cool little project I did this weekend involving a chalkboard and a touch screen. So guys, this is a fairly easy build. I mean, it was something that I did in one weekend and essentially the idea behind it was to take a Raspberry Pi with an official Raspberry Pi uh, seven inch touch screen. And essentially what I did is I uh, cut out a hole in a little wall I had at the end of my work desk. And um, that was fairly easy to do. Now it's a pass through wall, so it was pretty simple for me. I cleaned it up a bit. And I also had a uh, bamboo case for the Raspberry Pi, which made it really easy to kind of mount the touch screen into it. And then I was able to mount the uh, bamboo case to the wall. So that made it easy. In the future, I think I may actually just flush mount it right up to that board. Uh, probably look a little bit nicer, but uh, for ease today, and, and since this was something to try out, I figured I would just uh, put it right into this case. Um, so I drilled a few holes through there so that I could mount the case. I had to do the other side um, of the Raspberry Pi case with, uh, with holes through it. And you'll see here that I had a little bit of a problem. Luckily I had a uh, spare uh, Raspberry Pi case because you can see uh, right here I tried to drill right through the, the bamboo case and of course uh, cracked it completely. So uh, I had another one, so we got that back up and running, no problem. Um, and like I said, I think uh, if you don't wanna go the case of the bamboo, you could look at flush mounting this right onto the, th onto the, the board. You'd need a little bit of a uh, router edge or, or chisel off the edge a little bit for it, but it'd be pretty easy to do. So that was it, I got it installed into the, into the board. Um, it does pass through in the back. I'll probably look at printing up a 3D case just to cover the back of the, the pie when it's all said and done. Uh, but boot up was quite easy. I got a link below if you want to check that out and you can see um, exactly how I went about getting it booting up automatically into uh, Hab panel using OpenHab. Really simple to do. Most of it came out of the box with the Raspberry Pi. I added a few commands and a couple scripts just to get things to boot up and be clean right into the interface. So you can see here is uh, after a few commands and a reboot, it boots up in. Now I had a uh, kind of a temporary uh, touchscreen panel on here, so you can see that things didn't fit really well. Um, but just once it's up and running, it's pretty easy to play with. You can go ahead and edit it from any browser or any computer and uh, it'll update on its own on the screen. So you can see a little bit better one that I've been working with. So after I did that, I. Uh, wanted to clean it up. Now this is where I wanted to try to give it a little bit uh, better look to fit into its surroundings. I mean this is a garage and I wanted to try to keep it fun instead of a uh, plain old touch screen on a board. So I uh, taped things up and I went to print or I went to paint this with a magnetic primer. I actually had this around from before. Uh, big thing with this is you're going to really want to shake it up and stir it up. You're going to notice that there's a lot of clumps in there and I think that's probably the, the metal or the magnetic material that they put in there. That's why the can is such a mess here because uh, trying to stir it and to, to get it all into a consistent uh, matter was, was very difficult. There was giant lumps in it. So I made a mess out of it but that's okay. Now I'd used this in the past and it to be honest hadn't worked very well as magnetic so this time I went and put it on pretty heavy and I did actually about four coats uh, before I was done. It dries pretty quickly, but you can, um, the more you put on, I think the more you're getting those metal chips into the paint and into the wall. And it actually uh, had quite a magnetic hold when all was said and done. Uh, I could easily put magnets to it and, and get it to hold things up with that, which I'd never been able to do before. So obviously uh, take your time on this step, get as many coats as possible. So there it is. Now the next step, and this was the final one, is I decided to put a chalkboard paint on it. And uh, I figured this way it would kind of give it just a, an interesting aesthetic and then a little bit of functionality and fun in the garage as well. Uh, let the kids go and write on it and do that type of thing. So again, just mix this up really good. Um, and I put, again, I put this on quite heavy. Uh, I wanted to have a, a good surface uh, to paint on. Now this is actually a latex paint, so I mean, uh, it kind of, gets a chalkboard feel to it, but it even washes off really easy with a, with a cloth or a brush. So it's uh, nice to use. So I went and did that. At this point, um, 
I decided that I was actually going to look at extending the board. I decided that it looked a little boring there, so I wrapped it around onto the adjoining wall. Now, I didn't prep that wall with any type of primer. I probably should have, but keep in mind this is the garage, so I wasn't too worried about uh, about how it was gonna look. I just thought that uh, we'd try to get it painted up as well. In the end, I'm glad I did. I think the, the added chalkboard made for a little bit more fun, and actually I had the kids playing on it a little later, and uh, with just the one spot, there wasn't much room to, to write or play on, especially with the height. that's it like I said I put about four coats of paint on there uh, when all was said and done and this is just me getting in and uh, cleaning it up a little bit I used a knife to take the tape off trying to stop it from peeling at the edges and that's it as you can see uh, I've got some sidewalk chalk uh, the kids had this from writing on the, the road outside and uh, I mean it's pretty simple to write on uh, hopefully you guys are better artists than I am but I decided to just uh, mock it up a little bit for the purpose of this video and that's it so you can see that it's a it's a fun little project it's a nice way to take some technology and kind of meld it with something that's maybe not so technology wise um, it makes it a little bit more fun a little softer for everyone to use and it takes away from that kind of high-tech uh, look and feel of it and makes it a little bit more approachable by everyone the touch panel itself now provides control of all the lights in the, the garage and the front of the yard and the backyard. So uh, those are things that people really didn't have access to in the past. But now uh, anyone can open the garage. I've got the temperatures um, and everything is controllable from there. And of course I could add anything to it I want. And like I said, you can pretty much remotely uh, fix it. You can remotely uh, update it. You don't even need to have a keyboard or mouse on there. So guys, that's it. Um, hopefully you found this video interesting. It was just a little project that I did on a weekend. Uh, something really simple you can do. Uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe below. And we will see you in the next video.